Welcome to my yellow kitchen. Today my goal is to make cornbread and chili and before I start doing the chili I need to refill my bottle of Mexican seasoning. I have this recipe I got uh, years ago. I really don't remember where I got it but I've had it in my cookbook collection and I've modified it to what I like. So what I like to do is take my recipe up on my cabinet so I can see what I'm doing, get all my supplies out. Just to give you an idea, I really like spices, I really like cooking, and my husband built me this lovely display container because I had spices in like three or four different places in the kitchen. So he helped me consolidate it all. So those are some spices, and then over here, um, I have my drawer of all the bulk spices to fill up my containers and everything. So to get started, let's refill my Mexican seasoning container. So to start with, my ground cumin container is rather empty, so I'm going to go ahead and take some cumin seeds and put it through my little grinder. This is a coffee grinder, but it's never been used for coffee. It's always been used for spices. So it's not an exact science. It's just pour it in, grind it up. Here we go. good not to do just long, long pulses on it or don't hold it down forever because you can actually burn your spices. You'll the oil and it can get too hot and it can be burned. So you can do a little bit, but just pulse it until you get to the texture that you like. And still a little bit coarse for me, so I'm going to continue pulsing. nice thing about this one is you can turn it over, tap it, and it comes out in the lid. Um, talking about oils, you can see it's sort of clumped on the bottom, so I just take the finger, carefully work around the blade, and get out the rest. It's not... So you can see that was almost a full, full container of this grinder. And we got, now we're down to here. So let's see how far this takes us. This is gonna take forever with this funnel. Let me get a different funnel. That um, you know, brought it up to three fourths full, so that's nice. So on to actually making the spice blend. Let me put these things away. So to begin with, we start with two teaspoons of salt. I like using Redmond's Real Salt because it has all the minerals, trace minerals that salt should have in it. Now, it doesn't have added iodine, so if you're looking for iodine from your salt, Redmond's Real Salt won't do that. So two teaspoons and then two and a half teaspoons of ancho. I like ancho because it's not spicy, but it has, adds the peppery, smoky flavor to it. Two and half. This is a half a tablespoon of black pepper. Um, I can do this or I can get my, my pepper chip sliding measuring spoon. Nice thing about this is this is a tablespoon and I can do literally what, half a tablespoon rather than measuring out one and a half teaspoons. So just in one swipe I can get what I need. So here it's a half a tablespoon of black pepper and A 
little bit damp from being washed in the sink, so all the spices are sticking to it. So it's not going to fit. Half a tablespoon of the ground cumin we just did. A tablespoon of the garlic. I always forget how much this makes, so I could double it and just do whole whole tablespoons, but in the moment I'm not going to. So then a teaspoon of coriander, ground coriander. Is not very Mexican. I think it's just for this coloring. Teaspoon of oregano. An eighth of a teaspoon of smoked pepper. It's one of the things I added because I liked that it adds two things. Oop, that didn't work. Okay. And a fourth of a teaspoon of Chipotle. I didn't get. smoked paprika but this does not call for that so I'm gonna give us a mix and I like this because um, when you eat different cultures of food sometimes I really appreciate having a spice blend that just gives you that taste quality of all the spices commonly used um, in that cuisine so this is a nice shortcut and I like putting it in my chili so it's mixed up I'm gonna refill my container make sure yeah, it's the right one and we're ready to go so let me go ahead and clean up this area and then move over to where I'm gonna be making the chili so for the chili recipe, this is uh, one of the first recipes I learned how to cook for my mom was chili. And I know there's some pretty strong opinions about what chili is and what chili isn't. Um, and like most foods when you're growing up, you don't appreciate it until you're older and you go, well, I, I'm missing that chili from my childhood. So. Honestly, there's some measurements, but a lot of measurements aren't there. It's just a matter of muscle memory. So I don't necessarily have a recipe typed up for this, but I can show you how I go about making chili. So to start with, I'm working on browning the ground beef and I need to wait for my pot to warm up. So, But we buy a big chub, big log of um, ground beef from Sam's Club and then we take it home and split it up into one pound, one pound portions and freeze it flat like this so that when I need it, I can pull it out and it uh, thaws out really fast. So I'm going to start with two pounds ground beef and brown it in here once the pot gets warm.
Okay, so it's mostly ground. There's a little bit of pinkness, but because it's gonna be on the stove for a long time, I'm not worried about that. But I love this chopper. I got it for Christmas a couple Christmases ago. Um, it makes making ground beef really, really easy, and it makes a nice fine um, texture. Whereas before, when I was like trying to do it with this. It's a lot more effort and you don't necessarily get the same texture. So at this point I'm going to remove the meat. A lot of times I actually do this in the pressure cooker, but today I wanted to do it on the stove. It's a cold day. It just sounds like a nice thing to do. Um, this is 90% ground beef, so it's not going to give off a lot of fat. If anything, it gives off water. Um, so I'm not worried about draining the fat or anything. In fact, I'm going to probably add some oil in order to cook the veggies. Um, and like I said before, chili is very personal. It's very, people have strong opinions about it, and depending on the region you're from. Um, and I know some people would even call this not chili, but soup, because I'm putting vegetables and beans and such in it. But this is just what I like. And it reminds me of my childhood. I'm going to turn down the heat in the stove a little bit. I don't need to get all of this out of here, but the majority of it. So I think that's good enough. So now we're going to cook onion, celery, and green pepper. Um, this is one thing I like doing to, if I have any veggies that are going in bad or I'm not getting through fast enough in my refrigerator, I will chop it up and put them in a little zip box with information on it. You know, this is one green bell pepper. Um, and then it's available to me and it saves me time when I come to cooking the next meal. And then I have some fresh celery in my refrigerator, so add that in. And one trick with helping your vegetables brown and cook faster is to sprinkle a little salt in at this point, and it helps draw out the moisture. Um, so I tend not to do a lot of seasoning during my cooking because, well, my mom had blood pressure issues, so we just grew up not necessarily seasoning food very much as we're cooking it. People just seasoned it at the table, and so that's just my habit. Um, so this is going to cook, and I want the um, onions to be more than just like translucent. Like people say, cook it until it's clear or translucent or... Um, limp and that sort of thing but I want it more than that because my husband prefers well cooked onions if he's going to eat them at all and this is the point where I get to choose whether I'm going to blend this because sometimes if you see vegetables in the food then you might not want to eat it um, so that's just a way to get vegetables into our diet and get past the um, reservations people have about eating them I will probably blend it so we don't have chunks of green things in our food. Um, and I might go ahead and blend the tomatoes too, because I have a can over on the side here. I have a can of diced tomatoes, a can of tomato sauce, a can of kidney beans, and a can of black beans and then a can of green chilies. Um, I think the chilies and the beans and the meat will be fine, but tomato is a vegetable, so it might get blended as well. So depending on, I'm gonna wait for this to cook. And once this gets close to the end of what I want it to be cooked as, then I'll add in the garlic. I don't wanna do that too soon because garlic can easily burn and I want it cooked, but not burnt, so. And one tip about garlic, 
I love buying these at the grocery store, they're little packs of garlic. They can also do it in ginger and basil and I think something else, but the most commonly used in my kitchen is garlic and the ginger. So each of these are about a teaspoon or a clove. Um, so I have four of them sitting out thawing down. They actually thaw very fast. Um, I was actually introduced to that concept of making the pucks like that um, through learning how to cook some Indian food, like from India. Um, and that was one of the tips they had in the front is making a paste of ginger or garlic or whatever it may be and putting it in the freezer. Um, so just preparation for your, for your meals will go faster. You can have the fresh taste without having to have to always keep the fresh things on hand. So I used to do that myself with a lot of things. And then I found that the store sold these and it was very inexpensive and I started doing that instead. Um, but it seems like my Walmart's gonna start stop hearing them because they, the longest time I couldn't find it and when I did find it, it was like on clearance. So I may end up going back to making my own once I go through the stockpile I have in the freezer. So this is drying out and it's starting to stick to the bottom, so this is a good time to add the garlic. You can see it's already just a paste. And because things are drying out, I think I'm going to add a little oil to keep things going. I'm just doing this until I can smell it. And it smells like garlic. At this point, I can add liquid. So actually, I'm going to do the chopped tomatoes so I can blend it. And I'm going to turn down the heat. that's probably good enough. So now I can add the rest tomato sauce, beans, Meat. It's on low, and now it's a matter of seasoning it up. Whenever I'm working with beef, I like using bay leaves. It also is very good to find whole bay leaves and count how many you fit in so they're easier to retrieve later. Let's be generous and do four. Also with working with beef, I like using Worcestershire sauce. up the tomato flavor, some tomato paste. I really love these tubes you can have in your refrigerator because most of the time when I'm doing tomato paste I don't need a full can and I don't like having things go to waste in my fridge. So 
quite a while ago I found these and I always keep them on hand. Now with chili, I use a lot of tomato paste, so. Try not to break these as I stir this in. Then, there's garlic and onion already in there, but I want to increase that flavor, so garlic powder, onion powder, just gives a different level of flavor to it. I'm going to be generous with the chili powder because this is chili. And this is um, my favorite chili powder. It's by Frontier Co-op. I actually buy a big bag and just refill this. A lot of chili powders I've tasted are very one-dimensional. doesn't have a whole lot of flavor to it. Um, but that has a nice mix and actually tastes more than... just tastes better. Um, Mexican seasoning we did earlier. to pump up the ancho flavor, more smokiness without the heat, and then also emphasize the cumin. So, more cumin. And once this gets closer to done and has some time to cook and everything, I'll taste it again and see if I need to adjust the seasoning. So these seasonings will more than likely be left on the counter as this cooks. Um, in reality, you could eat this right now. Everything is cooked in it, but it won't have the same flavor as when it's allowed to cook for a while. It's like, you won't have any of the bay, bay leaf flavor in it at all at this point. Um, so this is just going to be on a low heat on the stove, and I'll stir it every once in a while throughout the day. Um, and this is a beautiful cast iron pan that my family gave me for Christmas, or for birthday, I think. Um, I love it. And so I'll just sit there, turn down the heat, and clean up a little bit, and get ready to work on cornbread. So for the cornbread recipe today, I'm going to be trying out a new recipe for home-milled corn cornbread. I'm new to using home-milled flour, so all of this is an experiment, and I'm hoping that it'll turn out to be a really good recipe that I can repeat. Um, I grew up on Marie Callender's um, cornbread recipe mix from this grocery store. It turns out to be like a pretty sweet corn cake almost. Um, so I do want some sweetness in this, but um, I've done whole milled corn cornbread recipe once before and the texture came out really grainy and just wasn't really pleasant. I want it to be more cake-like. So, uh, Let's try this recipe today. This recipe is from the website Breadtopia, um, so we'll give it a try. The first thing to do is to grind my corn and my soft white wheat. This is my mill, it's a wonder mill, uh, and the recipe calls for 150 grams of corn and 130 grams of wheat. They are very specific about which kinds they use, but I'm just going to use what I have which is basically popcorn, and then uh, the wheat is going to be a soft white wheat. So we'll see how this goes. With the Wonder Mill, you do want to turn it on first before putting anything in. in, 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 anything in. Um, I have it set to the finest setting, but I've been told that the Wonder Mill doesn't really have a wide range of grinding settings, so it might not make any difference anyways. <laughs>
So we've milled our corn and flour and wheat. And in a large bowl, we're gonna combine our dry ingredients, which will be the flour. And our sugar, which is two thirds cup of sugar. do salt, just a teaspoon of salt. Three teaspoons, which would be a tablespoon of baking powder. In a separate bowl, we are going to combine our wet ingredients, which would be a cup of milk. I'm using almond milk here. And a third of a cup of melted butter, which is kind of cons consolidated since I melted it earlier. And one egg. Not that many ingredients. But that's true for every corn bread recipe I've seen. I'm a little bit concerned because the butter isn't melted. But we'll see what happens. Just, today's a cold day. It's in the 30s. So even though the butter was melted, it stopped. So combine until just incorporated. Pretty sure it's lumpy because of that butter. I don't see any more dry flour, so I'm going to call it good. And pour it into our greased 8 by 8 pan. So this is going into a preheated oven for 20 minutes or until the toothpick comes out clean. So the chili has been on for a while and I've been stirring it every occasionally. So I'm going to go ahead and try to taste test it, see if I need to adjust the seasonings. It's 3 o'clock and we'll be eating it for a couple hours. so. We'll just see how, where we're at at this point. And the cornbread's in the oven. And it has about 11 minutes left before I test it. Let's cool this down. A little bit of spice in the back, which is fine. I think it needs. Mm. Let's just try just adding salt and see how that helps.
at the table. I like adding um, some lime powders like tahini. It has lime and paprika and that sort of thing. But it can be, paprika can be a little bit overpowering, but they also have powdered lime and powdered lemon juice that I like using. It's called Simply Lemon and Simply Lime. Um, that adds a nice brightness, um, variety to the taste. So let's see. I think salt was all, was all it needed. Now it's even more spicy. So I think it's gonna be good. I'm just let it keep warm in the stove. It's basically ready to eat now, but we'll just have it here, making the house smell good and making us think of comforting foods on a cold day. Because like I said, it's in the 30s. It's raining on and off, kind of a rain snow mix. So it's a nice day to have this. This is what the chili turned out like. I said it'll be keeping warm and I'll change from a slotted spoon to an actual ladle when it comes time to eat. So it's time to check the cornbread. It still has stuff in it and it looks a little bit soft. So I'm gonna let it go a little bit longer. So the edges should just be turning brown and they kind of are. I think it needs more time because of stuff stuck to the toothpick. So I'm gonna set the timer for another five minutes. So the timer went off and we're gonna check the cornbread again. It's definitely more golden. Clean, we're all done. So that's our finished cornbread. Looks kind of brown on camera, but it's I think it looks, looks good, and we'll see how it tastes. softer than the last one we made. Yes. So that was hard. Taste it. It's more tasty than the last one, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's just as crumbly. Mm -hmm. So this is the next day. Um, we're having our chili and cornbread as leftovers. And once again, it's welcoming because it's been so cold. Um, turned out well. Very tasty meal. Very great for this time of the year. A good welcome in for the first of December. Yep. And I do think that the cornbread recipe is repeatable. Um, I think it's a little bit sweet, so I'll try re reducing the sugar by you know, from two thirds to half a cup and see how it goes next time. But I hope this was helpful or if nothing else, I kept you company. Have a good day.